As the Moon Stair update approaches along with its UI overhaul, it's fair to say that Caves of Code has changed a lot over the years. The devs have been hard at work to future-proof code and make it not just playable on all devices, but accessible, readable, and pleasant to look at. With that being said, when you first open up CUD, things might not be quite right, and the options can be intimidating. Today I will attempt to demystify some of the options, recommend some be turned on or off, and some be left alone. I will be explaining the options based on the beta, please know that things are subject to change. If you gain anything from this, consider leaving a like, and if I miss something important, please let me know in the comments I will amend in the future. Much of the options in general are pretty self-explanatory. However, there are a couple of graphical options worth noting. When tiles is toggled off, you can play CUD in its original ASCII graphics, which I believe have been kept up to date. The vignette, the soft shading in the background can be toggled, as well as the scan lines. The brightness and contrast options are worth noting for those with photosensitivity issues, and are the only way to tweak CUD's contrast. Run in background is self-explanatory and mostly only affects the music as CUD is turn-based. Control mapping is the same as can be accessed from the pause menu. Pre-release use input manager is an important option. Turning it on allows fine control over key repeat and delay and controller support. This is also a relevant option if you want to play Caves of Cud on the Steam Deck. Turned off and Caves of Cud input rate will be as fast as your machine can output. It is recommended to consider the limit the input buffer to two commands option available in user interface. This option only affects the input rate if the new input manager is turned off. The key repeat delay and limit input buffer to two commands option both ensures that you do not queue too many commands at once, like when transitioning between zones. Allow mouse input and movement. It is recommended that these options be turned on. If you are playing on a computer, CUD will offer tool tips for creatures and objects when you hover over them with your cursor, and mouse movement will allow for faster travel through difficult to navigate environments. Allow mouse scroll. Disabled, and this will help you keep the play area at your preferred zoom level. Enable modern UI elements. When disabled, Caves of Cut is brought back to its most primitive interface, which I will refer to as the text-based interface. The text-based interface doesn't just include the gameplay aspects of Cud, but its menus and options. This interface is out of date, and personally, I don't recommend using it. When modern UI elements is enabled, you'll have access to Cud's new scalable UI options, which we will talk about now. Modern and overlay control scale. This affects the UI, not the play area. When you first start CUD, it will be set to Auto by default, which is a one-size-fits-all option. This option will ensure that CUD is readable on most resolutions and presents a 1920-ish wide resolution for text and UI elements. Auto 1.25 and 1.5 scales this up perspectively. It is recommended to explore the six options for scaling on the right to see which best fits your preference. If you like the message log to take up less space, it might be a good idea to pick a lower option to shrink text, but if you struggle to read, it might be good to go higher. Play area scale. There are three options here which all affect the scale of the play area. When fit is selected, CUD will ensure the entire playable zone is visible in the play area. This will likely result in letterboxing in the play area. When cover is selected, all available space in the player area will be filled by fitting to either the width or the height of the zone, whichever is more appropriate. For most monitors, the play area will fit to the height of the zone and will pan left and right, depending on the main character's position. Please note that at any time the zone is panable, the player may manually pan with the left or right mouse button and dragging. When pixel perfect is selected, the zone is sized to an integer multiple of the pixel art, meaning the tiles will be scaled up to a set number and the play area will pan in all directions depending on character position on the zone. This option is worth considering for visual clarity and sharpness. Dock message log and minimap. When right or left are selected, the message log, nearby object list, and minimap will be fit to the left or right hand part of the screen. Please note it's possible to manually change the size of the dock. Doing so will also change the visible position of the character in the play area for maximum clarity. You may toggle nearby option list or the minimap on or off with the buttons in the top right of the UI. When unset is selected, the message log, nearby object list, and minimap will all be visible as independent windows, all with set sizes and transparency options. You can still toggle the nearby object list or minimap, and you can also lock the windows so you don't accidentally move or resize them. It is worth noting here that if the player moves from one side of the screen to the other, that the interface will swap sides to avoid obstructing the player's view. This is true even if the interface is locked. If you want any interface window to stay in place, you can toggle this little pin. When the pin is red, the window will not move when the player moves across the screen. Flip. 
This mode is similar to left and right in that the interface elements are docked, but similar to unset, the message log minimap and nearby item list will flip to the other side of the screen so as not to obstruct the player's view of their character. Enable additional overlay user interface elements allows access to two additional overlay screens, which I will refer to as legacy. The legacy inventory allows you to browse your inventory and equipment with more mouse friendly buttons and also has filtering options. Likewise, the trade interface is scaled up and offers filters. Both of these interface options are kind of flaky and unmaintained. I recommend getting settled in with the non-legacy option for both of these. There are plans to revamp much of these interface in the future, upgrading things to a new standard. The legacy inventory and trade screens will be phased out. Display overlay keyboard for input on supported devices. When enabled, Caves of Code will display your button combinations for abilities despite the different input, meaning you can use the controller combinations and they will be correctly displayed. Display mouse clickable zone transition border arrows. This displays a border around the zone to indicate a zone change. They are not visible if the player area is set to fit. This option is recommended if you play in a panable play area. Automatic drink threshold will keep your character hydrated from available water. Automatic save on zone threshold will save your game at set intervals of how many zones you've changed. Note that this is not the same as setting a checkpoint in roleplay mode, which only occurs when leaving a settlement. Automatically douse and light torches is recommended if you are playing without night vision or do not yet have a glow sphere. Automatically disassemble scrap is a good setting to keep on if you don't want to be weighed down by tons of garbage. Note that your character will not automatically disassemble if there are nearby enemies. Show finding items while scavenging through trash as message log entries instead of pop-ups is a good option to keep on so that your gameplay will not be constantly interrupted when scavenging a high yield trash area. Maximum auto move squares per second will dictate how quickly turns progress when auto moving or auto attacking. Setting it to infinite will progress turns as quickly as your machine will allow. Ignore enemies less than and ignore enemies farther away. It is highly recommended to approach these options with caution as they can kill your character. Setting ignore enemies less than to easy will mean that if there are any trivial enemies on screen, your character will continue auto exploring regardless of their aggression. Likewise, setting ignore enemies farther away than five will mean your character will auto explore as close to four tiles away from a creature regardless of challenge level or aggression. Setting ignore enemies farther away than none is highly recommended. Setting ignore enemies less than easy can be considered, but with a caveat. A creature challenge level is compared to your own level, meaning if you are a high enough level, any creature could be considered trivial. Any creature or robot or turret which makes use of electricity or explosives has the potential to damage the player regardless of level, which means that at a certain point, even the easy setting has the potential to create problems for the player, and in some circumstances get your character killed. It is recommended to turn the following on. Auto pickup ammo, nuggets, trade goods, artifacts, special items, scrap, books, zero weight items, open chests while exploring, open bookshelves while auto exploring. Auto pickup primitive ammo will mean your character picks up rocks. Auto pickup fresh water is fine in the early game, but when you break double digits in level, you might consider turning this off. Ironically, water does not have a very good water to weight ratio. Auto pickup if hostiles are nearby and from adjacent squares can get you into trouble, as picking up items is an action which might mean an enemy gets a free attack. Always display the list of items during a get is a good option to keep on. If you aren't used to using the nearby object list and need clarification of what you are standing on without accidentally picking something up. Confirm before drinking and movement into dangerous liquids is just good sense. You might consider upping HP warning threshold to 60%. If something just did 40% of your health in one attack, you're going to want to stop and reassess before things go further. Color players at based on HP level will color your character's tile based on how damaged your character is. Ignore all status colors other than HP level for the player's at is intended for you to focus solely on the health of your player. There are a few rare effects which change the player's character color. This includes becoming chromed and tattooed. Enabling this option will keep your character their original color while also displaying HP color level. Change player's default at color based on some mutations. Mutations which affect the player's at color are rare. These include photosynthetic skin and receiving an extra limb which is plant based. Take corpses when using tab to take all should be disabled. It is very rare when you will ever need to pick up a corpse, and when the occasion arises, the action will be very intentional. 
The following options only affect the text-based UI and are not relevant if you intend on using the modern UI. Display ability status icons. Display the pop-up showing the contents of the current cell. Display your location instead of your name on the sidebar. Pressing Shift will hide the sidebar. Display detailed weapon penetration and damage in name is good to enable as it enables transparent information about the maximum penetration of a weapon. Display the color of the hit hearts as the target's remaining HP. This option only works if combat animations are turned off. Disable floor textures is an option which only makes sense when you have tiles turned off, as it makes the screen more readable. Always highlight stairs is recommended as it will make stairs more noticeable. Display bits with alphanumerics instead of dots. This affects the display for what kind of bits an artifact is made up of. Disable full screen color effects. This disables some rare instances when a character effect changes the screen color. Disable most tile-based flashing effects. This will turn off all the character tile visual effects which communicate when you have a currently active status effect. This can include effects like poisoned, flight, or even sprinting. Disable most tile-based screen warping effects. This includes visual effects like time dilation and recoiling. Disable full screen screen warping effects. This comes up rarely and is generally very story-based and spoilery. Always map directions to keypad. As far as I can tell, this does nothing. Map shift direction keys to pagination keys will allow the use of shift plus direction keys to quickly navigate menus like the inventory. You can also use shift left or right to swap through the various menus. Add a line separator at the end of each turn during combat as a convenient break in the message log when in combat to make each turn more readable. Indent body parts by attachment in the equipment screen makes it easier to parse what part of your body a limb is attached to. This is especially useful when playing chimeras. Show ability cooldown warnings as message log entries instead of pop-up menus means you will not be interrupted with a pop-up when attempting to use an ability which is currently on cooldown. Equip and unequip the highlighted item when pressing right or left respectively on the inventory equipment screen means you can quickly equip or unequip items when pressing the left or right of direction keys. This object circumstantially works and I generally keep it off. It also doesn't work as well for Truekin because there is an extra cybernetics menu which encumbers it. If you intend on playing with mods, you will need to enable mods, and also likely enable allow scripting mods, as most mods in the workshop make use of scripting. It is recommended that require approval each time a scripting mod changes be enabled to help prevent an updated mod from abusing scripting to harm your computer. Be sure to check the description of a mod and the comments for information about the mod and its current state. The Enable Harmony Debug Output and Write Compiled Mod Assemblies to Disk options are really only intended for those who wish to create their own mods. Cut is optimized enough that you should not need to enable any of these options, but even if your computer is struggling to run Cut, most of these options have been rendered redundant over time, and don't buy you all that much memory. The debug portion of the options has some interesting options and could be the subject of its own video. However, most of these options, save for three, are not relevant to the player. Don't delete classic mode saved games on death is pretty self-explanatory. If you are dedicated to playing CUD in classic mode, you might consider turning this option on. There is a rare circumstance in CUD in which the player might die due to unknown reasons. It is helpful to return to a scenario in which you died to examine and study it. This could give you helpful information for the future. Enable save and load. It's worth noting that this option also affects roleplay mode. Saving and loading a game in the middle of a dungeon is a different experience to the checkpoint system. When you enter a zone for the first time, Caves of Cud generates that zone based on your current playthrough's seed. Caves of Cud zone generation is not flawless, and things are subject to change. The game seed is more of a generalized suggestion. Should you die and return to a checkpoint, and then return to a zone, that zone would then be regenerated. Playing with save and load ensures you keep a zone generation. And finally, enable color text input is a hidden gem of an option, which, when enabled, gives you an option to select the coloring for your character's name, much like naming an object in-game. The option to color your name has always been available, but you had to use the color ID, which is pretty cumbersome. This option gives you a UI button to select from a list, making it much easier. And that's it. That's all of the options as of this current beta update. Shout out to Narf for explaining a lot of the options to me so I could make this video. If you found this video helpful and would like to see more of it in the future, please let me know in the comments, leave a like, and consider subscribing for more content like this. Thank you very much to the coffee subscribers for helping support the channel. I really appreciate y'all, and I'll see you guys next time for some more tutorials.